So this video will potentially be longer than the others. This is on how you should use social media. Now, there are many, many ways to use social media, countless number of ways you can utilize it to your benefit and to help others. Now, you know, I'm not sure what will be most beneficial is me talking about how I use it or, or how people could use it. So I'll, I'll kind of do a bit of both. So the, so a case study in recruitment, I mean, a lot of you might know recruiters generally have a bad reputation. It's kind of like estate agents, used car salesmen and then recruiters in the kind of world of rankings by people. And you know what? It's with good reason. A lot of recruiters are crap, utter rubbish. Um, I didn't know this when I started my recruitment business. I had no clue. I thought, oh, you know, people would love us. We're getting them jobs. No. So when I got into recruitment, I realized no one here can write copy. There's a few people who can write decent adverts, but everyone says the same thing, which is trash. Um, no one can talk to people properly. No one is focusing on relationships, although they're all saying it. No one is, you know, it's, it's pretty broken. And I thought, hold on a minute. I love marketing. It was kind of my last job. Um, I love social media. I love copy, absolutely love copywriting. Let's do something different. So every advert I put out is not just I'm looking for, I'm in need of, my client does this, oh, innovative, bleeding edge tech company. Everyone's innovative, I mean, right? It always starts with comedy, humor, sarcasm, uh, a relation to the news, um, a bit of interesting copy, a bit of, you know, something that is so different from others. And I've seen such success with hard to find candidates and getting clients because they've seen what I'm like on social media. I also do videos like this, talking about all sorts of topics. I put statuses up, taking the absolute piss out of other recruiters, comparing recruitment services to Nando's. But the thing is, this gets me business and gets me success. And the only reason I've, I've had this sort of success is because I've been one consistent, which is the most important lesson in social media. You need to be consistent. Secondly, I've been different. Um, I think Seth Godin once said, not standing out in a busy market is the same as just blending in. Um, so if you're not standing out, you're just one of many others, right? Doesn't mean walk around in a clown costume or a hot dog costume and shout about property. No, no. it means stand out in a way that is you. And naturally we're all unique and we'll stand out naturally anyways if we show who we are. Um, and so it's back to recruitment. I was consistent. I was standing out by doing something different. Um, and I guess thirdly was I made sure that I was approachable. You know, I'm just a guy working for my back room in Southall. I'm not some huge recruitment company with 200 people glo you know, globally and you know, I'm not, I'm approachable. Someone messages me, I message them back pretty quickly and I'll help. And that, those kind of three things uh, for me are what makes, or, or what explains how to do social media well. But on a more practical level in, in property, let's say, um, let's say you're a deal source or a deal packager and there's a few people who do this really well. Um, I'll tag them in the comments as well. Now, they, so if you're a deal, deal sourcer, you're, you're, you're selling deals. You want to post about deals all day long. Boom, I got a deal. Boom, I got a deal. Got a deal. That's great. But it's not really in interesting to everyone. I mean, it is pretty interesting. But at the same time, mix it up with motivational statements. Mix it up with sarcastic humor about Brexit. Mix it up with, um, oh God, look what, you know, the government are doing now to tax changes. Look at this news. Look at that. Oh, and here's a deal. You know, add value to people using social media. Make that your number one goal and add value consistently and it will pay dividends in the long term without a doubt. Um, you know, I've, I've done it in recruitment. I'm starting to do it in property. Um, and I'm already seeing return, not in terms of money, but in terms of people helping me and I'm helping them. And actually, it's a really good feeling. Um, something that I didn't really get before property. Um, so, you know, when you're posting things, one, make them relevant to your brand, do it consistently um, and make sure that it's adding value to people. And again, I've said this before, adding value can be absolutely minimal. Um, you know, if I talk about what is this oven cleaner, I guarantee five of you who are watching this video will actually probably want to know how this works because I'm, I'm actually quite interested. It's got something to do with a bag. But there's people who could talk about oven cleaner for hours and people who would listen to oven cleaner for hours, right? So make your value, um, sorry, understand what value you have to add. Um, secondly, you know, when it comes to posting, 
if you Google best times to post, I can't remember off the top of my head, but usually kind of Tuesday, Thursday between 10 to 11.30 a.m. are usually the best times to post things on LinkedIn, for example. Facebook often is slightly different because people are kind of on Facebook after work. I guess with investors, they're on it most of the day, or well, potentially in the background. Um, so firstly, have a Google of some times or come and talk to me, I can go through it in more detail of when you should be posting to get the best results and track these. Post it at 10 minutes different every week and track your views. Of course, there's many factors that affect views, but find out what time gives you better views, right? Something as simple as that, like A-B testing, that'll increase the number of people seeing what you're doing. Write blogs, write content, push it out there. Um, you know, in whatever you're doing, just make it relevant and interesting. Like, you know, if you're a funny person, don't write a blog like, yeah, stamp duty, it changed because the government article this, I want to call that, and it's, you know, be like, oh, stamp duty, what a pain in the ass. Like, it's the most annoying thing ever. Why do we even pay it? It's a bit like corporation tax. What do we get in return for it? Oh, roads, well, my roads full of potholes. So, you know, sorry, Mr. Government, I don't really want to pay stamp duty, but I'm going to have to, but I'm not happy about it. Do you see the changes in personalities? If you're that second personality, then, then show it to people, you know, and you can show it across in writing. If you don't think you can, speak to me, speak to a copywriter, go on Fiverr. Plenty of people out there who can kind of do it for you. Mm-hmm.